Hi everyone, welcome. As you can see, the systems that we're checking in on are just one day shy of hitting their 200th day in service. But you know, I guess after 14 days, two weeks since the last check-in, it seemed like they were due for a feeding. They were the next ones on my schedule and I had time to come in here to feed them. So today, feeding number 17 will be just shy of the day that we would normally celebrate or at least recognize their milestone day in service. So since we're not going to be checking in on them today, we'll just sort of wish them well and a happy 200th day in service today. And that'll be that. And I got a feeling that they're not going to take it personally. <laughs> so now, a lot of times when I share one of those information boards with you about my systems, there's often all kinds of interesting information on there about perhaps some sort of a test object or material that's been in progress for a certain period of time, or perhaps we're dealing with a particular mix of worms, which is unique to the rest of my worms. Sometimes we feed my mixed red worm bin, of which I only have one. Sometimes we feed my outdoor worm bag, of which I have only one. Sometimes we tend to my original, quote unquote, original red wigglers. But there's really nothing that sets these bins apart. They're pretty much your average composting bins. Fed two weeks ago, ready for their next check-in and feeding. So, let's get to it. The, uh, the stuff we're giving them is this assortment of various vegetable matter. I believe the majority of it is cauliflower. Parts of the cauliflower that just didn't look quite right were excluded from being served to humans. Left for the worms. I could see some carrot. So there's clearly other things in here as well. There's even a jalapeno pepper core from which I've removed all the seeds so that I can make a worm chow out of that stuff at some point in the future and obviously banana peels. So let's dig in. Ah, moisture level feels good already, first impressions. 14 days ago, we, I think we gave them a pretty routine kind of feeding, similar to what they're getting today, just a mix of different fruits and veggies. And after 14 days, I would have to assume that they've probably done away with the majority of what they were given at that point in time. Aha, uh -huh. I can already tell what that object was that we just bumped into. I can smell the scent of orange. So I guess besides the typical everyday stuff, we gave them one of those materials that some people consider as a no-no in the worm bins. I generally don't subscribe to too much of that sort of stuff. I'm a little bit more, a little bit more, uh, how do you say? I'm a little bit more uh, adventurous <laughs> when it comes to tending to my worms. And I don't worry so much about them because I think for the most part, if it's a material that was once alive and one that uh, some sort of a material that's going to eventually decompose, decay and break down, it's pretty much fair game for the worms. Some people think there might be too much acid. Some people think there might be too much um, little worms inside this banana stem. They're working it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I had something on the tip of my tongue there. So I think one of the types of materials like the orange is thought to have maybe citric, citric acid that the worms might not like. I'm trying to think of what the other simple common example was that I was going to use which also has some sort of like a wives tale or myth about why it might not be good for the worms. Um, over the years I've not only tended to my own worms but I've watched many videos of other people tending to their worms and I've seen all kinds of stuff put into the worm bins and the worms always manage to figure it out in a way. I'm just wondering when it's going to occur to me what that other example was that I uh, 
couldn't recall. It'll probably come to me as soon as I stop rolling. So it is kind of nice to see how the worms are just all over the feeding zone. Clearly working down some of the remaining bits of stuff we gave them last time and during past check-ins. Here's another banana stem. Let's see what we see if we open it up. Usually we'll find a couple wormies hanging out in there and then I guess something you don't really picture is the juiciness of it. So there is a good bit of juiciness down within that stem even though you wouldn't think that that would be the case. So let's, uh, what's this? Some sort of a popular patch of food there that they're busy working on. Part of it being the chunk of orange that was placed into this system and some banana peel. So it looks like there was still a little bit of leftover stuff in here, but certainly not much. It does seem like the 14 day interval here between feedings was pretty much on the money in terms of coming in to give them more. This is the stem of a pepper. Similarly popular with the worms working out the juice here inside of it. And then other parts of it are a little bit more fibrous, take longer for the worms to work down. So um, that's just going to take a little bit longer, but that too will all go. All right. It's just interesting to have that citrus scent. These are corn cob bits, and I guess my new thing with corn cob bits has been to help it along when I could, because if I didn't, it would just sit there. <laughs> and it would also gradually get worked down, but it's such tough, slow composting material that corn cob always takes a long time. So anything I can do to help it along is a plus. So I just spent the past couple hours out in my yard taking care of what I'm referring to as round one of cleaning up the autumn leaves in my backyard. And I believe it's because I was um, down to my last batch. This is the last batch that I brought in a couple weeks ago, I believe, at this point. And I just got into this thing of hoarding this last batch of leaves, not knowing when I would be restocking. But over the past few days, the leaves have started really coming down. And I've got a whole lot more coming down soon. This is just a portion of what was in the trees. So I think it's fair to expect that there's going to be a good bit more work to be done out there in the yard with regards to collecting leaves. But the first thing I did was I collected all the leaves around the holly bush that I've got out in the yard because I didn't want to have any holly pointy sticky um, sticky sticker. What's the right word? Basically, um, if you've ever touched the leaf of a holly bush, you'll know it's got a sticker on it or multiple little stickers. So I really didn't want to have any of that sort of stuff in my leaf collection because like what I'm doing right now would be interrupted by a little prick on my finger almost like if a needle had stuck me and that's not good <laughs> so I want to make sure that any holly leaves get placed into the leaf bag that I end up putting out on the curb and sending away with the leaf collection guys and then I took the more selectively chosen other leaves that I knew were free of any pointy holly leaves and I set a couple bags of those aside, three bags specifically. I mean, one of, one of the viewers at one point left me a comment, oops, left me a comment at one point sort of criticizing my use of cardboard. And I mean, most people use cardboard, but this person had a pretty good point saying, hey, if you got leaves, use the leaves and send the cardboard back to get recycled and save a tree or two in the process. And I really, I don't know, believe it or not, I do actually read all the comments and I do my best to 
respond to as many of them as I can, if not all of them, even if it's just a thumbs up or a smiley face or something. And uh, I must admit, that person definitely had a point, you know, with regards to using bedding materials in the bin. So, I think we're almost at the finish line here. We've added the bedding, we've added the foods, we've added the grit, and usually I use this, the, uh, the back filling of the feeding zone as my excuse to sort of check the outskirts of the systems to see how things are over there, and then we'll be pretty much done for the day with these little guys. So I just wanted to bring back some of these old leftover bits of food that we encountered along the way, but there wasn't much. So that's all taken care of. It seems like the material out here on the edges is pretty nice in terms of, you know, nice castings for the most part. Here and there I see a little bit of this and that, a little bit of leftover food or whatever, another banana stem. And I see worms, which tells me the material probably has a, an adequate moisture level to it as well. If it were drying out or getting to a certain dryness level or lack of moisture, if you want to think of it that way, then the worms would be sensitive to that and they would avoid being in it. But to me, the presence of worms is one of the primary telltales that I look for to gauge moisture relative to how comfortable it might be for the occupants of the bins and as far as I could tell everything in here looks pretty decent and you know since these are sort of like brother bins or sister bins or whatever you want to think of them as buddy bins um, it's fair to assume that we're going to find similar outcomes when we examine the outskirts of this bin over here, bin number two, and over here we definitely saw a lot of worms, and I believe it wasn't like a social call. I think they were still working on some sort of a leftover scrap of food that was kind of in the middle of that bundle of worms. Always kind of fun to bump into a little worm party while you're checking in on your worm bins. So I believe things in here look quite nice. I can't complain. And you know, for a 200 day old system, this does seem about right in terms of uh, concentration of castings relative to bedding material. For that matter, I would almost say that bedding might be a little bit on the shy side. Definitely seeing lots and lots of castings in here. Um, but before we uh, replace those paper, newspaper top coverings that we've got, I'm going to do something that I often like to do, but I've not been doing much lately because of my hoarding of the leaves, <laughs> is applying a little bit of a top coat. So in a way, I'm sort of forcing the issue at this point, I'm trying to allow my little storage of, or supply of leaves run out so that I can start bringing in some of this year's leaves, although they're not quite as dry as these here. Those still have a lot of their autumn colors, and I don't think that'll last too long. I'm sure that the color will fade and the material will dry out, and it'll become more like this here. But I don't think the worms are all that picky. <laughs> I'm sure they'll gladly take leaves that are still hanging on to a little bit of their original moisture content, even if it's a little relative to what they've been getting Typically down here in my worm bin, this fairly old, totally dried out leafy matter. In fact, getting stuff that was perhaps a little bit more recently bought in from outside would be a, a treat for them, although I don't know if there's really that much of a difference. To me, it seemed like these top coverings were starting to show a good bit of wear, so I thought that perhaps if we were to unfold bits and pieces of it, then we would have more material with which to cover the top surface. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm not intentionally trying to <laughs> draw out the length of the video, but it seems like I'm going a little bit overboard here in terms of attention to detail. If that edge over there remains 
fold it over. So be it. I got a feeling by the next time we come in here, these pieces of newspaper are going to be totally shredded to bits and definitely not usable as a top covering sheet of paper anymore. They'll just go down into the feeding area and get repurposed as supplementary bedding to complement the foods. And then we'll probably give them some other sort of replacement top covering sheet of paper. So let's cover up because we're done. So alrighty. Plastic coverings are doing pretty good. At this point, gradually over the past few weeks, I've been coming into systems that were not yet covered with plastic and covering them with plastic. So all my systems are now covered with a protective layer of plastic so that the systems can hang on to their moisture content. Where I live, it's a fairly humid summer. So all summer long, it seemed like the humidity was permitting the worm bins to hang on to their moisture quite easily, even if they were left uncovered. But now as the drier autumn weather rolls in, it seems like we've got to compensate for that a little bit and help the systems hang on to their moisture. Um, but on that note, I think we're done. I got a few things to take care of getting cleaned up and put away. I'm not going to keep you around for that. Before I go really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.